Good evening. We want to welcome you along to our Bible study and prayer meeting and our hope and prayer. Our prayer is this evening that you will know God's help and enlightenment of mind through the Holy Spirit to grasp the truths contained in his words. I was reading a beautiful verses this morning, um, speaking of God's faithfulness and his goodness to us in Lamentations chapter 3. And it says it was a, a time of darkness in Israel and Jeremiah, he, he writes, this I recall to my mind, and therefore have I hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. And as we reflect even on a, on a day that's gone into eternity, a day that's passed this Wednesday, we can think on the faithfulness of our God and his, and his goodness to us. And as our brother David Cranston comes later to share God's word, we just trust that you will experience and know more of God's faithfulness as he expounds the word of God to us. We're going to sing together a really a great resurrection hymn, a hymn that brings great comfort to us. The chorus says, he lives, he lives, Christ Jesus, he lives today. And if you want to get the words for this, you can Get them onto your phone, your iPad, and just you sing along uh, with me tonight. <clears throat>
as I've been chatting to some of you over the phone, that as we've been singing these hymns, you've been singing away as well in your own house. And if you do want to send your singing in to us, just you feel free to email that across and we'll get you up. And, uh, and uh, we do want to just welcome you really tonight. And if you are visiting us for the first time, we want to give you a very special welcome. Just a few announcements uh, at this point. Our prayer requests. I uh, do remember Reverend Maxwell uh, at the moment. He has he is um, having trouble with his throat, and we would ask you to really pray that he would know a, a real divine and healing touch upon his throat at this time. You know what it's like to to um, have a sore throat, but not to be able to speak is very disabling. And so we want to really pray for Pastor Maxwell tonight. Do also remember to pray for the, the new converts, those that have recently uh, came into the faith, those that have recently become Christians. Pray that their roots would go down deep into him, that they would be like a, a well-concreted building, that their foundation would be deep in, in God's word. Then after our Bible study tonight, we have our Zoom prayer meeting for the ladies. And so if you go on to, in, on, in, if you click in the WhatsApp, right after you will see a link. Johanna has put it up. And if you click on that link, it will transport you into Zoom conference call. And from there, uh, Ruth will be um, leading the prayer meeting tonight. So that's right after this, um, no later than 8.45. Do you remember then if for the new converts and those recently blessed in this past uh, couple of years, two years, that there is a special Bible study tomorrow night at 8 p.m.? And so if you fall into this category, and you've been recently converted, recently came to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And you would like to be part of this little Bible study. It's a very simple uh, little study we'll be looking at uh, on having a, a quiet time, uh, how, to, how to pray. Very simple basics that you need to know to become established in the faith. And if you'd like to become part of this, uh, why don't you send me uh, your name over WhatsApp to, to my number. You'll, you'll get it on the WhatsApp group, group page. We are so thankful that David Cranston has come along to us tonight to, to, to lead us in God's word and to expound it and to explain it. And just before David comes, I just want to commit us uh, to the Lord in prayer. So let's bow together and let's pray. Our eternal heavenly Father, we thank you that we come to a God who is alive. We thank you that what we've been singing is is serious truth that he lives, he lives. Christ Jesus lives today. And people today might ask, how does he live? Where does he live? We can say he lives within my heart. And through the person of the Holy Spirit, he has indwelt us. And through the person of the Holy Spirit, we thank you that he gives us the confidence to come before the great and holy God and call him our, our Abba Father, our Father which art in heaven. We thank you for the confidence that we have if we ask anything according to your will that you hear us. We thank you for the confidence that we have to approach you because of our sins have been paid for at Calvary. And we thank you that today, tonight, that we serve a risen Saviour, one that as we pray to him, he is praying for us. And so we ask you tonight that you will give to us undivided minds, that our faith in you as we listen to your word might be expanded and grown. We pray that our roots would go down deep as never before. We pray that our vision of the Lord Jesus Christ would increase. And Father, we pray that the power of your word will catch grip in our hearts. We pray for any tiredness and distracted minds that they would fall by the wayside and you'll give us clarity to hear your word and to be a doer of it. We pray for David as he comes up to explain, uh, Lord, and to expound the word of God, the precious word of God. We pray that the Holy Spirit will take him, that the Holy Spirit will use him to make God's words known unto us through the lips of David tonight. We pray that the Holy Spirit will have free reign and that through this message, through David's message tonight, that we would be encouraged, we would be built up, we would be established in the faith. We pray very much tonight for Pastor Maxwell. We thank you.
for his dedication to the work of God over many years. We thank you for his love for the people that you've placed um, as, as himself as a shepherd and, and, and people as his sheep. We just pray tonight in, that you will touch his throat and that he will know uh, clarity once again coming back into his voice. Father, this is but a small thing in your sight to heal, but it's a big thing in ours. And we ask you the touch of the Master will be upon Pastor Maxwell tonight. We also would pray, continue to pray for Paul and Sharn. We thank you that Paul and Sharn is feeling somewhat better recently. But we just pray for Gwen also, that during this time of loss, the rawness of it, that they would feel the presence of the great God of creation, the one who said, that I will stick closer to you than a brother. We also would remember Claire and Keith at this time. We pray your blessing, your favour, your help, your grace upon their lives, even, even today. So continue with us, Lord, as we keep looking to you. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Pastor Samuel, and it's lovely to be uh, here tonight for the Bible study. Uh, so something obviously new for us all, but we're getting uh, used to this technology and uh, this uh, new way of communicating God's Word. Uh, and I trust that you're being blessed as you tune in uh, to the Bible studies, to focus for the day, uh, to our morning and evening services. Uh, so I trust that you uh, are be benefiting uh, from the Word of God. Uh, even in this time of self-isolation and time at home, uh, it's time, uh, a time, a precious time where we can uh, be in God's presence around his word. And what better place for you and I to be uh, this evening, only around the word of God. Uh, I want to share with you this evening something that I've been thinking of, obviously at this time of year. Uh, and I want to ask you uh, a question. Uh, what does the resurrection mean to you? If I was to say to you to go and uh, get a piece of paper uh, and uh, in the, your own thoughts, what does the resurrection mean to you? If you were to write four points uh, on the resurrection, what would you say? Uh, those of you who are perhaps on the road uh, a fair while in your Christian faith and uh, for those of you who have been recently saved, uh, what does the resurrection mean to you? Well, what I want to share uh, this evening is s some selected scriptures. And if you have your Bible, I trust that you will follow along and even take notes if that's what you want to do. Uh, but I want to go through some uh, passages and uh, leave with you some very simple points. I want to leave with you four points this evening. But we'll uh, begin uh, with a bit of context and a bit of uh, uh, our introduction if the resurrection is not true, if it is not true, then we are duped. No, no resurrection, no gospel, no eternal life. If we don't have the resurrection, then we meet in vain. The resurrection is a fundamental, is the fundamental doctrine to our Christian faith. There's the resurrection. Now, 1 Corinthians 15 tells us, and you can turn to it. And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain. That's 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 14. And your faith is also vain. Let me read that again. Verse 14 of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And if Christ be not risen, then our preaching vain vain and your faith is also vain and if we proceed even to verse 15 yeah and we are found false witnesses of God because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ whom he raised not up if so that the dead rise not for if the dead rise not then is Christ raised Look at verse 17. And if Christ be not raised, your faith 
is vain. Ye are yet in your sins. Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ perished. And if this life only uh, we have hope in Christ, we are also men most miserable. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so Christ shall all be made alive. The resurrection is com has been and is and will be completely fundamental to our faith. If we don't have the resurrection, we have nothing. In fact, it's what propelled the Apostle Peter on the day of Pentecost to go. It was the resurrection of his blessed Savior that propelled him to go to preach Christ, him crucified and rising again. That's what propelled Peter. In fact, Acts 22 and 24 tells us that. Whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. That's the thrust behind the early church. That, that's what propelled them to go and to preach the gospel. In fact, in Acts 24 and verse 32 we read this Jesus hath raised up of which we are all witnesses that's what the apostle said verse 36 therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made this Jesus whom you crucified both Lord and Christ now when they heard this they were cut to the heart then Peter said to them repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's what propelled them, as I've said, was the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Gospel preachers quite often preach the gospel of the crucifixion, and that is so. But the apostles, it was the gospel of the resurrection. And, of course, that should be our gospel too. The crucifixion loses its meaning without the resurrection. Without the resurrection, the death of Christ was only an heroic death, as a writer put it, of a noble martyr. But with the resurrection, it is the atoning death of the Son of the living God. The resurrection. What does it mean to you? What do you know about the resurrection? What is it to you personally? Do you know what it means fundamentally by going through the word of God? Do you know the passages that pertain to the wonderful truth of the resurrection? What does it mean to you? R.A. Torrey wrote that in it we have all sufficient ground for knowing that the blackest sin is atoned for. We dare not distort the doctrine of the resurrection. We dare not have it weak. We dare not take a wrong view. We dare not get it wrong. Because it is our, the fundamental of why we are here. The resurrection of the Son of the living God. And that's the message that we have to the world. That we do not serve a dead saviour. He wouldn't be a saviour if he was dead. We serve a risen saviour. Now the four points that I want to bring to you very quickly this evening. The, the results of the resurrection of Christ. The results that we have. The wonder that we have through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. In 1 Peter 1 and 21 we read these words. Who by him... Do we believe in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory that your faith and hope might be in God? In God. I want you to notice those last two words, in God. The first point that I want to bring to you is 
what we learn are the results of the resurrection of Christ is our view of God, our view of the Father. And surely this is the need of the hour. What is your view of God? What is the view of God to the world? I would say in these times that you and I are living in, there are many people, certainly that I have been in conversation with, have said, surely there is a God. Surely God is speaking to this world. Our view of God, that's what we learn as a result of the resurrection of Christ, firstly and foremostly. And though Jesus, though through Jesus Christ, men have become believers in God, who raised him from the dead by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And this is a solid foundation is led to our faith in God, our faith in the Father, our faith in God, our Saviour. You know as well as I do that man has always been looking for proofs that God exists. That's the, a burning question for many. Is there a God? Does he exist? Well, through the marks of our creative intelligence, uh, there is a guiding hand. And you know that very familiar passage when it comes to people asking, is there, is there a God? Does God really exist? Well, when we turn to Romans 1 and 20, we read these words, and you know this verse so well. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. We know that this world is without excuse when we see the creation, even in the springtime and the beautiful weather that we are witnessing. We see and we know that God exists even through the creation. But how much more does God exist or the proof that God exists only in the resurrection of Jesus Christ? The reality of the resurrection points with an unerring certainty to the existence, power, holiness of the God who raised him. If ever we needed to know does God exist, surely we see it by the raising of his son. The God of the Bible is not a light fancy. It is fixed faith resting on a firm fact. It is not open for question or dispute. The fact that God exists, the fact that God is the one in whom all things pertain, in whom all things answer to and will answer to. If ever we were to see does God exist, we surely see it in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. First Peter, Peter wrote in his first epistle, in chapter 1, verses 3 and 4, he wrote, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Here's Peter praising God, the Father of Jesus. Verse 3, Which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. So, the results of the resurrection of Christ, point number one, is our view of God. And when we see those verses that Peter wrote for us, he tells us in verse four, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that fadeth not away reserved in heaven for you and me. So not a bit of wonder Peter said that blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's because of God the Father that these things are possible. It's because of God the Father that we have 
an incorruptible crown. It's because of God the Father that it is undefiled and that fadeth not away and is reserved in heaven for you and I. How is your view of God? How is your view of the Father? Our view of God. Certainly in these days, we ought to be getting a fresh vision of who God is. And it's because of the Father that these things are possible. It's because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, it helps us to get a fresh view of God and who he is. Point number one is that our view of God is, is the need of the hour. But point number two, because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, is by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, God hath given the assurance to all men that he will judge the world in righteousness. So because of the resurrection of Christ, we have this assurance that the world will be judged. That's fundamental, isn't it? If you turn to John chapter 5 and verse 22, we read these words. For the Father judges, judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. Isn't that interesting? Did you know that? John chapter 5 and 22, we'll read that again. For the Father, that's God, judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. So God has given his Son, Jesus Christ, the responsibility to judge the world in righteousness. And that's all because of the resurrection. Now if you turn down to John chapter 5, which you're at, but turn to verse 27. And hath given him authority. So the Father hath given him authority to execute judgment also. Because he is the Son of Man. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming. In the which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice. And shall come forth they that have done good unto the resurrection of life and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. Isn't that a very interesting point? That because of Christ's resurrection, the Father, God, has given him the authority to judge this world because he hath committed all judgment unto the Son. By raising Christ from the dead, God has set his seal to that claim. That is so interesting. As we dig into the scriptures and as we realise what does the resurrection really, really mean? There's more to it than our Sunday school days. There's more to the resurrection than is just on the surface. When men ask, is there really a judgment day coming? When Christ shall judge the earth, the reply should be, yes, because Christ rose from the dead. It's because of the resurrection, that's where Christ has the authority given by the Father to judge this world. The sure fact of the resurrection of Christ in the past points very clearly forward to the sheer coming of judgment in the future. Belief in a judgment day is no guess for theologians or scholars or for you and I even. It is possible. It is a, it is a positive faith founded in a proven fact. John spells for us clearly in the verses that we have read very briefly together in the second point. That Jesus Christ, because he hath raised 
because he was raised from the dead, will one day ask and demand that the graves will be opened. And those who are saved will rise, and those who are unsaved will also rise. And there they will be judged by Jesus Christ. All because Christ rose from the dead. So our points, let's recap very quickly. Number one, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the results of the resurrection of Jesus Christ is our view of God is the need of the hour. Point number two, by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, God hath given the assurance to all men that he will judge the world in righteousness. But point three, by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, believers in him are justified. That is declared righteous. And this ought to thrill our hearts. Let's turn to Romans for this third point. In Romans chapter 4 verse 25 we read these words. Who was delivered for our offences. That's Jesus. And was raised again for our justification. Who was delivered for our offences. And was raised again for our, for yours and for mine. For our justification. To be justified. To be declared righteous in front of a holy God. You and I are justified, not because we believe in the Christian faith, not just because we have been brought up in, a, in an evangelical setting, not just because we believe the Bible, but because Jesus has been raised from the dead. That's the reason why you and I are justified. That's the reason why you and I are declared righteous today. We know that Christ gave his life a propitiation for believers. And we'll come to that word in a second. Propitiation. He was delivered up for our justification. Now let's break that down very briefly. R.A. Torre wrote that the resurrection settles it beyond any doubt that God has accepted the propitiation. Now what does that word mean? It means atonement. It means to be forgiven. It means to be forgiven, especially that of Jesus Christ. That's the dictionary definition of propitiation. It means that the resurrection settles it beyond any doubt that God has accepted the atonement of his son. The resurrection is God's declaration of his acceptance of Christ's atoning death. That's what, that's what God is really meaning. When he rose Christ from the dead, he was really accepting. That was his declaration of his acceptance of God's, of Christ's propitiation or his atonement. The declaration of our personal justification. So really God was declaring that he was accepting the death and atonement of his son when he rose him from the dead. Oh, these are, these are great truths. And by the resurrection, God declares that he has accepted and is fully satisfied with the settlement that Christ has made on our behalf. It pleased the Lord to bruise him. Now what seal of approval do we, what better seal of approval do we need to have only knowing that God has accepted the atoning death of his son when he raised him from the dead. Think of the authority that there is in our justification. We're not coming to a God that is that is dead or we're not coming to a God that is not in authority. We're coming to the God of the entire universe of who 
as we, as we read, who hangs the earth on nothing. We are coming to this God knowing that he has accepted this, the atoning death of his son. Knowing that you and I have been justified. Knowing that you and I have been declared righteous. Because God has accepted the atoning death of his son by raising him from the dead. And because of the resurrection, I am thus declared righteous in God's sight. Do you know that because of the resurrection, God who is holy, who cannot look on sin, who even turned, he couldn't even look on his own son when he was dying on the cross. Because of the res resurrection, God looks on you as though you never sin. Because of the resurrection. If ever we were troubled as to whether God accepted the offering that, G that Christ made, his atoning death, we only have to look at the empty tomb. Imagine what it must have been like to go, knowing that this Jesus whom you followed, knowing that you had left everything to follow him, knowing that he had died on the cross, they would have felt so hopeless. But to see the empty tomb, knowing that God raised him from the dead, knowing that all of the prophecies were fulfilled, knowing that even Christ's words were fulfilled, Jesus said that he would rise again. But to see it, to see the empty tomb, and you and I would do well to visualize the empty tomb, knowing that God, the omnipotent God, raised Christ from the dead. When Christ arose, he arose as our representative. He died as our representative. He arose as our representative. He ascended as our representative. He is seated as our representative. You know that you and I couldn't even approach God. But because of Christ, the great high priest, you and I have the authority. Because of Christ's atoning death, because of his resurrection, you and I, as mere mortals, can directly go to God the Father because of Christ's death and resurrection. He is our mediator. He is the one that gives us the access to a holy God. Christ is our representative and he is seated at the Father's right hand this very evening as our representative. Isn't that wonderful? Ephesians 2, 5 and 6 we read these words. Even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace are ye saved. Now verse 6. And hath raised us up together because of the resurrection, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You and I, dear friend, this evening, as we come around the word of God. Because of Christ's atoning death. Because of his resurrection. You and I sit in heavenly places. In Christ Jesus. Dear people. We can't comprehend that. You and I can't even begin to fathom. What that means. But because Christ raised from the dead. You and I as we have considered, have been justified. And you and I sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. He is our mediator. What a wonderful saviour. And because of the resurrection, we are declared chosen, accepted, and righteous in him. It's unbelievable what the resurrection means to you and I. So we have considered, because of the resurrection of Christ, our view of God, our view of the Father. That was point number one. Point number two was, because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, God hath given assurance to all men that he will judge the world. Point number three, because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, believers in him 
are justified. We have been declared righteous in front of a holy, holy, holy God. Point number four and lastly. Because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, it is the guarantee of our own resurrection. What benefits do believers receive from the resurrection of Jesus Christ? It means that you and I will rise also. It means that you and I can have eternal life. We know that God will raise, up, will raise us up because he raised Christ, his son, up. We know that. And it's amazing to think that because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we will rise also. Thomas Watson, who was the great Puritan writer, wrote in his book, The A Body of Divinity, he wrote, at the resurrection, believers being raised up in glory shall be openly acknowledged and acquitted in the day of judgment and made perfectly blessed in the full enjoyment of God for all eternity. May these truths never ever become familiar to us. Because of the resurrection, you and I will rise from the dead. Our bodies to be reunited with our souls if, because we have gone on before. That's why in most graveyards, the dead are led to rest pointing to the east. Matthew 24, 27 tells us that. And you can look at that, Matthew 24, 27. Awaiting the second coming of Christ. The dead are, are led in the, in the graves, pointing towards the east, awaiting the resurrection day. And what a day that that will be. In Romans 8 and verse 11, we read these words. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. What a verse of scripture that that is, Romans 8 and 11. Because of the resurrection of Christ, death has lost its terror for the believer. Death has lost its sting. We read that in 1 Corinthians 15. Death, where is thy sting? Grave, where is thy victory? Because of the resurrection, we can say boldly, and they are bold words, that death is a good thing. Because of the resurrection of Christ, you and I will rise to eternal life. To the new Jerusalem, as we read off in Revelation. The wonder of the resurrection. What does the resurrection mean to you? Well, I'll tell you what it means. If you, if you take nothing else, it means it's the guarantee of our own resurrection. It's the guarantee of our eternal life. When we see, sadly, many funerals today because of COVID-19, we see remains being led to rest with very few even at their funeral services, and even less for those, unfortunately, who have this virus. It's a desperately difficult time to lay a loved one to rest. But for those that have this blessed hope, for those of us who have trusted in Christ, for those who know that because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, that we will rise also, that when that shout comes, that we will rise because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's all because of Christ. Because of the resurrection. Families that are listening to me, even this very evening, that have lost loved ones. And it's a painful, painful thing. But dear friend, because of the resurrection, there's a blessed hope. Because of the resurrection. That day when the lame will be made to walk. That day when the blind will be made to see. That day when the broken hearted 
shall be mended. When all tears shall be wiped away. Because of the resurrection of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. So let's recap very quickly. The results of the resurrection of Christ. Point number one. Our view of God. It's the need of the hour. Point number two. Because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It tells us that he will come and judge the world. That God has given Christ the authority to come and judge the world. Point number three. Because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, believers are justified. That is declared righteous in front of a holy, holy, holy God. And point four, our last point, the resurrection of Jesus Christ is the guarantee of our own resurrection. May these very quick truths, and there's a lot of scripture there, but I trust that you'll get into it and really understand what the resurrection means. We could spend hours of what it means. And I trust that this will be an assurance to you that Christ is risen. He's seated at the Father's right hand. And for us who know him as our own and personal saviour, our guarantee is heaven and home. We're not to worry in these days. Of course, it's a concerning time. We're to be sensible, but we're not to be afraid. We're not to worry. Because all stems because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I trust uh, that you will be blessed in these days, knowing that you belong to him. And if you don't know him as your own and personal saviour, it is my prayer. You know that Jesus loves you. And he died and rose again that you would be born again. So I trust that you know him. Let's just have a word of prayer. Our gracious and eternal heavenly father. We thank you Lord for these wonderful truths. The depth of what it means in the word of God. And yet Lord it's so simple. Because Christ is raised from the dead. That we can have eternal life. Oh father we pray that your hand would graciously be upon us upon all those that are listening, all the families of our church and many others and further afield. We pray, Lord, that you would be pleased in these days to continue to speak, to build your church, and that the gates of hell will not prevail against, us, against it, as you've promised in your word. So, Father, we thank you for this short time together in our Saviour's precious name. Amen. Well, thank you very much for listening. And do remember uh, at 8.45 to tune in to the Zoom uh, prayer meeting. I'm sure you'll be richly blessed. Uh, and please do that, young ladies, uh, tonight. Thank you very much for listening.